Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the weather warnings as we do have ice warnings issued for parts of Northern England, Scotland and Northern Ireland. We'll go through the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the course of the next five days. As we do have briefly drier and cold weather coming in for the next sort of 24 to 48 hours for the unsettled westerlies return from around midweek. And as we head into the weekend, it will remain quite unsettled uh, towards next weekend, but it probably will be turning a lot colder as well with the northwesterly flow, proper polar maritime air masses moving in. Again, it won't be anything sustained in terms of cold weather, but it will be generally below average with quite a lot of cool conditions around, wintriness over the higher ground and parts of the north. As we'll see on the GFS, GM, ECMWF and the ensembles, we'll be able to see that things are starting to perhaps shape up to be a bit colder from mid-month. Not only do we looking likely to see this polar maritime air mass come in next week uh, and sort of stay in and around, especially in the north, but there are signs of more Atlantic ridging, especially from the GFS from that day 10 and onwards, which could start to bring more northerlies, perhaps northeasterlies. We're not seeing any sustained blocking, which would put it into a sustained cold spell, but perhaps cold enough to give a few days of wintry weather, some snow, widespread frost returning, things like that, from around the 10th to 15th of January. It's what we did say, or we have been saying over the last week or so, sort of the middle of the month, the return to at least the chance of colder conditions, um, and that is what we are seeing from some of the models today. So definitely some more amplification of the jet stream and some ridging starting to appear um, in sort of the mid to longer range. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. Of course, it is the 1st of January today, so wish everyone a happy new year. We had a very successful year last year on the channel, accumulating over a million views um, and about 3,000 subscribers as well. So hopefully we can continue to be successful this upcoming year um, and do similar numbers, if not uh, progress more. And again, that is all thanks to you watching this. So thank you for that. Um, and hopefully we have another great year um, and some more interesting weather coming up over the next 365 days. So as I said, if we do start on the live radar, you can see there are a lot of showers around at the moment, but for many areas where we have had a lot of heavy rain around, there were some dry spells. Through England, uh, especially southern and eastern England, we're seeing quite a bit of drier weather at the moment. Uh, a few heavy showers on the blustery winds, little convergence zones, creating some, some blustery showers in and amongst a generally brighter feeling day. Northern England is more uh, in those showers today, uh, and parts of Scotland, which had a lot of snow over the last sort of 24 hours, especially of the higher ground, is starting to turn a bit drier as well. But there's a huge temperature contrast over the country at the moment, with cold air lingering in the north and mild air lingering in the south. You see all this rain across parts of northern France, Guernsey and Jersey, and that will be heading northwards and will be clipping the far southeast. Um, over the course of this evening so it shouldn't really arrive maybe until 5 6 p.m so you are out and about this evening if you are sort of london area southwards and eastwards of that pretty high chance we see precipitation maybe some thicker cloud and more patchy rain further north and westwards of that uh, again it will all depend on its positioning but that general southeast uh, quadrant into east anglia will most likely see persistent rain this evening before it turns widely a lot drier tomorrow if you look at the temperatures, as I'm calling this, around 1pm, again, pretty mild in the south and the east, very mild New Year across a lot of northern and western Europe, getting towards the mid to high teens widely. For southeast areas, it's about 12, 13 degrees today, so a pretty mild New Year, but again, nothing too exceptional, just a few degrees, uh, maybe sort of three or four degrees above average for most, a um, bit higher in a few places. But it does get quite a lot cooler further north, it's part of Northern Ireland, parts of Prop of Ireland, Northern England, and Scotland are much more towards average, if not getting towards below average in the northern extent here, uh, with temperatures widely in the mid single digits, down towards the low single digits, even only touching freezing over the higher ground of Scotland. Again, not too unusual for winter, it's quite likely, oh, it's well, quite normal, sorry, to be seeing very cold conditions over the higher ground of Scotland, pretty much persistently through December until March. Um, uh, 
But of course, we have sort of escaped that the last few years. We have had a lot of very strong southwesterly conditions and not seen too much snowfall. Um, but we are seeing pretty healthy snow amounts so far this season, um, uh, which is at least a good thing. Climatologically, we are sort of around average, really. Um, and we'll have to just have to see how the next month does develop. If you put on the weather warnings, you have widespread ice warnings issued through northern England and Scotland and Northern Ireland tomorrow. But for the rest of today, we have one ice warning from 6pm this evening until 11am tomorrow. Again, we're not expecting too much precipitation out of the sky, but where we've seen a lot of rain and snow over the last couple of days, all that moisture on the surfaces will freeze tonight and we'll see icy stretches. Again, there could be some wintry showers as well, and that could create some more sort of slight accumulations in places and some icy stretches high likelihood lower under the impact matrix and again widespread ice warning through scotland and then one introduced into northern england from midnight tonight until 11 a.m and the same for northern ireland as well pretty much the same warning but just starting slightly later uh, probably because those temperatures are going to cool down slightly later than they will do in scotland if you put on the UKV now and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature, you can see heavy snow across Scotland for many early this morning, but it has faded away quite quickly. And by this afternoon, you can see showers in the north and those showers in the south. And that persistent rain will push in, as I said, mostly for that southeast quadrant into East Anglia, but could drift further northwards and westwards. We'll have to see. But again, for most areas, it's around sort of 6 to 8 p.m. It properly arrives. And it should only really be sort of light to moderate rain, not expecting any particularly heavy rain within it for eventually it clears out of the North Sea by around midnight really so quite a small little rain event there again if we had a lot colder air introduced we'd keep our eyes on this because it's sort of those sort of channel low systems that can push moisture into cold air and could have produced a lot of snow if we actually did have uh, cold air embedded but we don't so it's generally going to be uh, all falling as rain uh, before it does turn colder afterwards and into tomorrow as I said it's a generally quite a dry day tomorrow with a ridge of higher pressure few clouds here or there, maybe some rain in the far southeast with a few showers and parts of northern and western Scotland, but elsewhere, clear skies and looking really quite beautiful for the 2nd of January. Will be colder as well, under higher pressure, colder air mass, a little bit of an inversion taking place, um, and we're seeing temperatures maybe only mid-single digits, maybe even colder overnight, below, uh, getting widely below freezing in areas. As we head through Monday evening into Tuesday, you can see a big weather front arrives, bringing snow to northern areas over the higher ground and rain mostly elsewhere. And pretty washout day through many areas in the west through Tuesday, and that rain eventually arrives all by the evening as those weather fronts push back in off the Atlantic. So yeah, very unsettled from around Tuesday onwards, and we stay very unsettled again. Won't look at this in too much detail because it is likely to change, especially the timing with this and uh, the precipitation intensities and positioning. But again, this is the general theme, just heavy showers around on the days where we don't have big weather fronts pushing in. But then another weather system will arrive uh, and you see through Thursday, another big system arrives. You see a bit more southerly track there, this system, again, showing that the jet stream is uh, subtly moving southwards, allowing cooler air to come in and could be some heavy snow through Scotland and eventually towards the end of the week that rain wraps around all areas and you can see from the upper air temperatures cold polar maritime air is eventually arriving and that's that sort of polar maritime northwesterly wind we've been talking about the last few days finally arriving giving pers pretty persistent average to below average temperatures uh, towards next weekend. If you put on the two meter temperatures, you'll be able to see that this afternoon quite cold across Scotland, widely around mid to low single digits, if not towards freezing over the high ground, but 10 or 11 degrees in the southeast. So above average in the southeast, below average in the north. As we head through tonight, quite cold across Scotland, many areas dropping down towards of minus five degrees, really chilly. Same with Republic of Ireland, the far southeast remaining fairly mild. But through tomorrow, as I said, it's going to be quite a cold day, widely temperatures struggling to get much above sort of six to eight degrees. That's sort of average for this time of year, uh, but areas further northwards, it'll be more towards sort of one to three degrees, so a lot cooler. But again, clear skies, so it probably won't feel all too bad with lighter winds um, and sunshine around. So yeah, it'll be a kind of cold, crisp day, but it probably won't actually feel all too bad. As we head through Monday evening into Tuesday, widespread frost in the east, but most people, by the time they wake up, that frost probably will uh, sort of disintegrate as cloud and uh, rain and higher temperatures push in. As we head through Tuesday afternoon, 
um, widely milder again in the south and west especially 10 to 12 degrees uh, starts pushing in uh, still cold across scotland we will hold on to that colder air for a time for eventually generally milder conditions to arrive all by wednesday even the high ground of scotland getting above freezing but again look at that 10 to 13 degrees quite widely but as we head through thursday you can start to see it does cool down still got a bit of a milder wedge there through the rock of island that will spread eastwards but eventually cooler air is starting to dig in from the north uh, west and that will set up a generally average to below average few days uh, of unsettled cold sort of weather so if you look at the gfs now look at what's happening over the course of the next couple of weeks again you see westerly flow uh, coming in at the moment keeping us really quite unsettled um, and then yeah just See a brief ridge of high pressure over the next day or two before eventually those westerly winds come in. And then as we head towards Friday into Saturday, you can see that proper polar maritime air mass coming in from the northwest. Quite cold upper air temperatures, minus 5 degrees if not cooler. Could see some brief milder air from the south at times. But you can see there through pretty much from uh, early Saturday through Sunday and into Monday, we stay generally below freezing at 850 HPA. So average to below average quite widely. From eventually we see a brief wedge of milder air and we stay cold. So once that polar maritime air mass moves in, we're likely to stay on the cold side of the jets. There will be brief mildest wedges, but again, they'll temporarily raise the temperatures um, to maybe sort of high single digits, maybe 10 degrees or so. But most areas will probably be mid single digits over the course uh, of the days following sort of Thursday this week. You can see in the longer range, though, as I said, more Atlantic ridging from the GFS. You can see more higher pressure towards Iceland and Greenland, and it's trying to pull a northerly wind in there. But right towards the end of the run, we see a bit of a Scandinavian high to Iceland sort of high building and cold northeasterlies pulling in. Again, this is not a proper blocked, sustained cold spell. But this will give two or three days of pretty chilly weather coming at the coldest time of the year it could be pretty bitterly cold out there minus 10 ice firm it's not too far away it could be seeing temperatures hardly getting above freezing for many areas there and frequent snow showers coming in from the east so again we are at sort of the coldest time of the year so even these sort of synoptics here that don't look exceptionally cold can produce very cold conditions just because of the time of the year and the cold air available to our northeast so we'll have to keep an eye on this. Of course, we're not seeing a lot of consistency beyond some day 7 to day 10. Um, but we have definitely seen a ramp up in cold runs over the last couple of days in the longer term. No consistency on what exactly is going to be happening. But we're generally seeing more amplification in the jet stream. So even if it doesn't produce anything uh, blocked and bitterly cold, it's likely to bring colder northerlies or northerly shots, um, brief northerly spells, northerly topless, things like that at least. So giving sort of brief cooler spells for a couple of days, frost, wintry showers widely in the north. So we'll have to see what happens, but definitely signs perhaps of generally cooler conditions in the mid to longer range. If you look at the GEM, see how that does compare. Again, you can see the westerly flow coming in at the moment. Brief ridge of high pressure early this coming week. And then eventually we see cold northwesterlies arriving towards the weekend. Really chilly northwesterly flow under that uh, under that big low pressure system on the north. And we can see lows track to the south of that. And that could actually produce quite a big snow event, perhaps. We have seen signs like this before. I did say January 2019, a few days ago, similar pattern, maybe more of a north to northwesterly with that. This is more of a long sea track, so perhaps more marginal with this. But that we saw a northwesterly flow, not a tradi traditionally very cold spell, but it was cold enough to bring the minus five line in for a number of days. Uh, and it meant the cold, cold air sort of sunk to the surface. We saw quite a major snow event and a good few cold days in the south so we could see a pattern like that and even at day 10 you can see more atlantic ridging no big low pressure out of course northeast canada definitely heights rising here and producing more of a northwesterly to northerly wind so definitely a colder pattern no sustained blocking or anything but a generally colder pattern from around this friday saturday onwards you can see how that cold air mass initially pushes in minus five isotherm the at low pressure runs into it not quite too much cold available air over sort of central and southern england but could produce snow further northwards but we remain fairly average to below average persistently there for a good five days so this is what i mean not a cold blocked pattern nothing that would produce widespread ice days but definitely the sort of pattern that can give average to below average quite persistently after you finish, but have a look at the ECMWF, see how that does compare over the course of the next 10 days or so. Again, a westerly flow pushing in. 
coming cooler towards uh, the end of this coming week, into the weekend with the Polar Maritime Air Mass, and as we head towards day 10, nothing exceptionally cold, a bit of Atlantic ridging, perhaps towards Greenland there, out of northeast Canada, less of these blue colours, which indicating slightly higher pressure, and less cold air spilling out there, so perhaps signs of a more amplified jet stream, um, but again, nothing, as I said, succinct at day 10, generally, uh, well, there's a mild sector coming through there, but it's generally average to below average, um, again, brief milder wedge towards our south but again that probably could be shifted very easily and there's quite a lot of cold air in and around us so even though yes it's on the surface slightly milder than the other runs it's still a general uh, generally a similar pattern now if we finish by having a look at the ensemble members you can see from the gfs latest ensembles in the long term we're average to probably below average there are a few big spikes there of milder wedges um of air moving in and you can see the operational gfs does that generally average to below average but a brief milder spike and that's what i'm uh, that's what i think a majority of these brief milder spells are most are around that sort of freezing or below again the next five days is generally above average and as we head towards the end of this working week average to below average in my opinion looks more likely some signs of some more sustained weather, cold weather, sort of minus 6 to minus 8 degrees, age with the HPA in the longer term, but again, nothing too persistent at this stage. But it is increasing in numbers gradually. We'll have to see how it does develop. Big sign that it is only a polar marathon air mass is the dew points. Yes, our prayer temperatures from a lot of these runs get down to sort of minus 5 degrees at 850 HPA, but a lot of them, the dew points are staying around freezing, if not slightly above freezing, indicating the added moisture in off the North Atlantic, giving, uh, giving rise to those dew points uh, and generally surface conditions getting moderated. So yes, from some of these runs, we're seeing quite cold upright temperatures arriving, but I must emphasize it is a polar maritime air mass along a very long sea track. Therefore, the surface conditions do get moderated quite significantly. Of course, if we see it sort of sustained for a number of days, the cold air towards the surface, or the air towards the surface would turn cold eventually. But minus five from the northwest is not as cold as minus five from the east. That is, must be stressed. Now, if we finish by just look at the ECM WF ensemble members, very similar, well above average for the next sort of five or six days at times, um, with brief cooler spells, even the colder weather coming in over the next day or two, or average to low average conditions. Here, the upper air temperatures are not particularly cold, but it's because we're under higher pressure. But you can see around the end of this working week into the weekend, Average to below average conditions start to arrive. The ensemble members are generally around average here, but again, I definitely say a lot of these milder areas are to do with brief milder sectors in the south. If we do have a look at Glasgow, you're able to see it's more below average here by a degree or two. Again, their actual uh, red line is lower by a degree because of the northwards, but their actual mean of the ensemble members is more below average as well. So the reason why London is a little bit more towards average at times, or maybe slightly above average, is because it's got wilder wedges, even though the general pattern is average to below average upper air temperatures. So we'll have to see what happens. It does look generally cool um, over the course of the next couple of weeks, after sort of the next sort of three or four days. Unsettled, still looking quite likely. There is a chance in the mid to longer range, um, or at least we're seeing more chances of more application, which could mean a more varied cold weather, perhaps, and something more widespread and more sustained, but still signs at this stage. And of course, we've got to keep an eye on all the sort of mid to longer range climate drivers as well. Look at the MJO, NAO, AO, and the stratosphere as well, which are all developing as we speak and we'll have to see again what happens over the course of the next few days and the next week or so again i'll probably do another update on all of that as i did a few days ago probably this upcoming week uh, having a look at that and whether we are still are seeing blocking returning in the north atlantic and arctic in the longer range well that mjo is still going to phase seven and eight which would encourage more amplification of the jet stream perhaps that's what we actually saw on the gfs there that mjo driving that more atlantic ridging and could we still see perhaps a sun stress rate warming towards the middle of the month or end of the month? So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.